In this series of videos, I'll be explaining what time signatures are and how they work. In this video, part one, I'll be explaining the more common types of time signatures, such as those listed here. And I'll be demonstrating how to calculate missing time signatures from a passage of music. It's really important that you understand note names and their values before looking at this video. If you're not sure of the names of notes, have a look at my video, Note Names and Their Values. Firstly, it's important to understand the meaning of a time signature. So here's a time signature which most people have seen before, 4-4. Four, four. What does it tell us? Well, the top number tells us how many beats are in a bar. In this case, there are four beats in a bar. If the top number was 12, there'd be 12 beats in a bar. If it was a three, there'd be three beats in a bar and so on. Technically, you can have any number you like at the top, as long as it's a whole number and not a fraction like two and a half. But we'll start with smaller numbers first. It's the bottom number that seems to cause most confusion. The bottom number tells us the type of beat. By this, I mean, do we count in crotchets, minims, quavers, or something else? In this example, the bottom number is four. This effectively means which note, and here are a few, can fit into a semi-brief four times. Four times because there's a four at the bottom of the time signature. The answer is a crotchet, this one, as it has a value of one, and can fit into a semi-brief four times. So we can say that the full meaning of 4-4 four, four is four crotchet beats per bar, the four being the number of beats, the crotchet being the type of beat. Let's look at another example. As there is an eight at the bottom, you need to work out which of these notes can fit into a semi-brief eight times. Here's our semi-brief at the bottom of the screen. A minim only fits twice, a semiquaver fits 16 times, whereas a quaver, which is worth half, fits eight times into a semibrief. So we've worked out that eight represents a quaver. So the full explanation of this time signature is that there are three quaver beats in each bar, the three being the number of beats, the quaver being the type of beat. This time signature which has a two at the bottom, well, that represents a minim, as two minims, each worth two, fit into a semibrief, which has a value of four. So the full explanation of this time signature is three minim beats per bar. Hopefully by now you're getting the hang of what time signatures represent. So let's look at some fairly common time signatures. 4-4, four, four, this is a very common time signature. So much so, it is often abbreviated to this symbol. The C is short for common time. Now, I've already said that this time signature means that there are four crotchet beats in a bar. This is true, but it clearly doesn't mean that we can only write four crotchets in each bar. Of course not. We can write anything we wish in the bar as long as the total value of the beats is exactly four, no more and no less. So this is acceptable. So is this. The four semiquavers equal beat one. This crotchet is beat two, the two quavers equal one beat, and the final crotchet equals one beat, so there are four beats in this bar. This bar is also acceptable. The four quavers equal two, the final minim also equals two. Two plus two equals four beats we are allowed in this bar. The same is true for every other time signature. No matter what the time signature is displayed, every bar must equal the number of beats in the bar. 